Hello and welcome to this YouTube presentation on the Business Information Technology Architect, also known as the Data Modeler. My name is Charles Richter and I'm the Principal Consultant for Repose PTY Limited. In my introduction to the Information Architect, I mentioned that I'd be delivering this presentation on the responsibilities of the fourth category or class of Information Architect. In this presentation, I'll describe the responsibilities, inputs, processes, outputs and skills and an example of the deliverables of the Business Information Technology Architect or the Data Modeler. So what is a Business Information Technology Architect? As I could not find any reference to those words anywhere on the net, I decided to start my search by using the words Data Modeler in a Google search and found the following Wikipedia reference. Quote, Data modeling in software engineering is the process of creating a data model by applying formal data model descriptions using data modeling techniques, unquote. But this is still not clear to what a data modeler is or ought to be, as what are the data modeling techniques? As I see the business information technology architect and the data modeler as one and the same concept, I should define them by their responsibilities, skills, inputs, processes and outputs. Hence, I will state that the Business Information Technology Architect or Data Modeler is responsible for identifying and recording the formal facts or attributes of the corporate conceptual knowledge model. In Repose Speak, this is the skill of the Repose Architect Grade 4 or RA4. In the case where there is no corporate information model, the data model will need to record the facts in either a spreadsheet or a word processing document. What about the inputs, processes and outputs of the Repose Architect Grade 4? Ideally, the input a data modeler needs are the knowledge model produced by the Repose Architect Grade 2 and the prioritized systems model produced by the Repose Architect Grade 3, as well as the existing documents, reports, databases, data structures, transactions and such like. These documents contain the data elements currently used by the business. So what is data? According to a Wikipedia reference, quote, data are pieces of information that represents the qualitative or quantitative attributes of a variable or set of variables. Data, plural of datum, which is seldom used, are typically the results of measurements that can be the basis of graphs, images or observations of a set of variables. Data are often viewed as the lowest level of abstraction from which the information and knowledge are derived, unquote. The purpose of the data modeling sessions is to get business operatives to clarify their needs for the data elements. The output of these sessions is basically the logical data model. Let me provide you with two ways a business information technology architect can identify data. The first is to use existing transactions and documents and transpose them into data flow diagrams. The second uses a technique of rationalization or natural selection and uses the corporate knowledge model together with the existing transactions and documents. Both of these will require the business information technology architect to facilitate a number of sessions with the business operatives in order to clarify the use of the data elements. The following resources will also be required in order to record the data elements, whiteboard, butcher's paper and or a computer using a spreadsheet or word processing program or a computer assisted data element recording tool. As I mentioned earlier, there are two ways a business information technical architect can use to identify the data the business requires. The first approach is to use data flow diagrams. So what is a data flow diagram? According to a Wikipedia reference, quote, a data flow diagram, or DFD, is a graphical representation of the flow of data through an information system, unquote, as can be seen in the diagram below. And we're, according to Wikipedia, invented by Larry Constantine. The problem with this technique is that it requires all data flows or transactions to be known before being able to identify all the data elements. This approach requires business operatives to sit through many lengthy sessions as the data can only be clearly defined by way of its usage. The second approach is to use a technique called rationalization or natural selection. Using this approach, the data modeler will reference the conceptual knowledge model developed by the Repose Architect Grade 2 and the prioritized systems model developed by the Repose Architect Grade 3, as well as any documents available to them, 
However, as the corporate conceptual model provides the data modeler with a hierarchy of entities, and as the system priorities provide the focus as to which entities to use, the data model or repose architect grade 4 is able to facilitate focused sessions with business operatives. During these short, no longer than 30 minute sessions, the data model will assist the business operatives identify and define the attributes by placing them in their rightful entity. For example, when focusing on an entity called birth certificate, the natural attribute named a person's date of birth would be discovered and recorded accordingly. Hence the date of birth is an attribute of the birth certificate and is associated with a person through the link to the birth certificate which should have been discovered during the knowledge modeling sessions undertaken by the repose architect grade 2 or at least should have been if the knowledge architect had done their job correctly. This is an example of a screenshot taken from CASPER or Computer Assisted Strategic Planning and Reasoning Engine that I had to write in order to support the repose technique. It shows the birth certificate entity with the three attributes, namely the primary key, which ensures the uniqueness of each birth certificate, the attribute called date of birth, and the foreign key, which links the birth certificate to its appropriate person. As soon as the repose architect grade 4 populates the corporate data model with the attributes, the output, namely the attribute list, is ready to be passed on to the next information architect, namely the logical database designer. This is an example of a deliverable developed by the Repose Architect Grade 4. Unfortunately, due to the constraints of YouTube, the font size I'm using may make the reading of this very difficult. However, we run an online training course for the Repose Architect Grade 4 and provide a number of case studies of knowledge models to help with the identification of the attributes. It can take between 7 and 14 hours to train an information architect Grade 4. And this includes the use of the Casper engine. It should be noted that this deliverable provides the input into the database design phase and using the corporate conceptual knowledge model, a competent repose architect grade 4 should not take more than two weeks to fully populate a corporate conceptual model of between 350 and 500 entities. In closing, I'd like to thank you for reviewing this presentation. The PDF is available for a small fee should you want to assist us further the aims of repose.com and especially repose.org. You can find the aims of repose.org on www.repose.org. You can reach me by sending an email to charles at repose.com. As I mentioned at the start of this presentation, I will be creating presentations covering the responsibilities, the inputs, processes and outputs and possible examples of the output for each of the remaining information architect grades, namely the information technology architects grade 1 and 1 through 6 as well as the two test architect grades. It may take a while for me to complete all the presentations, so please bear with me. If you are eager to pursue a presentation of a grade that I am not yet ready to post, please visit our site www.repose.com, select the Quick Links drop-down menu and select Repose Architects. You can always email me for more information. Once again, thank you for your attention.